a quick review the pharmacology of the antihypertensive agents sodium nitroproside will be dilating the veins and the arteries now sodium nitroproside by combining with oxyhemoglobin is going to release nitric oxide which will be diffused inside the vascular smooth muscle and will be stimulating guanylate cyclase enzyme which will be converting guanine triphosphate to cyclic guanine monophosphate the cyclic GMB now will be stimulating specific protein kinase which will be activating myosin light chain phosphatase and that enzyme will be decreasing the interaction between actin and myosin also the cyclic GMB will be decreasing the concentration of calcium inside the vascular smooth muscle in addition nitric oxide will be opening the potassium channels so the potassium will be out and that will be leading to hyperbolarization all these effects now will be leading to a relaxation in the vascular smooth muscle that relaxation will be more in the veins comparing with the arteries so that will be leading to a decrease in the venous return decrease in the stroke volume and finally decreasing in the cardiac output in the arteries is going to increase the diameter of the arteries which means that we are reducing now the peripheral vascular resistance so reducing the peripheral vascular resistance and decreasing the cardiac output will be lead to a decrease in the blood pressure the major indication for sodium nitroproside is in hypertensive emergency and also in severe heart failure now sodium nitroproside should be infused through specific bump was at the same time we continuously monitored the blood pressure through an intra arterial recording the sodium nitroproside rapidly will be metabolized through uptake into the red blood cells and releasing the nitric oxide and cyanide so now the toxicity it will be predicted we have an accumulation of cyanide and that will be also having a metabolic acidosis producing some types of dysrhythmia or arrhythmia and also we might be expecting that we have a severe hypotension beside finally it might leading to death Phenol dopam. It is a D1 dopamine receptor agonist. Will be working by stimulating the D1 receptors in the vascular smooth muscle, and that will be activating adenylate cyclase enzyme, which will be converting the adenosine triphosphate to cyclic AMB. Cyclic AMB is going to activate the protein kinase A, which will be activating the myosin light chain phosphatase. So that will be decreasing the cross bridging between actin and myosin and leading to a relaxation. Produce a relaxation in the smooth muscle will be leading finally to a decreasing in the peripheral vascular resistance. On the other hand, we have also the dopamine receptors in the kidney. We have one of them, we call it a dopamine one like receptors in the proximal convoluted tubule cells. That stimulation of this receptor will be produce a inhibition of the sodium reabsorption, 
through two mechanism through inhibition of the sodium proton exchanger and also inhibition of the sodium potassium ATPase bump. So that will be leading then to an increase in the water and sodium excretion. And finally, will be ending up with a decreasing in the cardiac output. So this decrease in the cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance will be decreasing the blood pressure. The phenol dopam is a working uh, very rapidly in less than five minutes to start to produce its effect. However, the duration of action, it is also very short, less than five or seven minutes. And then it's supposed to be given by a continuous IV infusion. So the major indication for phenol dopam is in the management of severe hypertension and in hypertensive crisis. And this agent consider the only intravenous agent that will be improving the renal perfusion through the stimulation of the D1 receptor in the renal artery so will be increasing the blood supply to the kidney so that's the reason it will be beneficial in the hypertensive patient who has a chronic kidney disease uh, some of the side effects or toxicity for phenol dopam is reflex tachycardia headache flushing and increase intraocular pressure so don't use it if the patient has a glaucoma uh, 